What's up, guys? How you guys doing today? I am standing here on the banks of the Clinton Gulch Dam Reservoir. That's right, we went and saw the Dillon Reservoir a few weeks ago, and now we're up here. And once again, you can see I'm out of breath because we are once again a higher elevation. And I can't believe this, but it is snowing again. That's right, guys. Take a look, it is May 11th. This thing is still frozen, and you can see there's snow all around the ground, which is wild, because I wasn't expecting this. In fact, just coming up over here, I'll have to show it to you guys on the way back. This, this section of the trail is covered by snow, um, and there was no ground underneath the snow. I just stepped directly down into the water. So today, we're gonna talk about what creates mountain ranges um, and I am stoked because I love mountains but what's cool about talking about what creates mountain ranges is we're not just discussing what creates the mountains themselves but what shapes the planet this planet earth that we live on awesome now the first people known as the Cree and for you Marvel Universe fans not the same Cree or maybe, man, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure not. But the Cree, they called this Asinwati. And Asinwati would be the first name for the Rocky Mountains. Uh, later, a French explorer came through and he referred to them as Montagna de Roche, de Roc. I'm sorry, folks. If you speak French, give me a call correct my pronunciation also if you speak Cree give me a call let me know because I have no idea if I am saying the word Asinwati correctly I'll put it up on the screen so you can read it figure out for yourself so what's cool about the word Asinwati is what it means is as seen from the prairie it looks like a rocky mass not mess with an e mass with an a um, and if that just isn't an extremely apt description, I don't know what it is. The word is basically, it's much like the Rocky Mountains, it's basically just describing <laughs> what they are. But uh, I thought that was super cool. All right. This right here is where the course of my trip changed. So this is snow, it's melted a little bit. That's my massive footprint right there. Um, but you can see, I don't know if you can see it, let's see if we can find it. Right up there, the snow is melting coming on the mountain. It's created a stream that's coming underneath this snow right here. And you can see this is a normal thing because there's clearly wood planks that so has come some type of bridge. Um, but this is not a complete bridge. So, something to take note of. You're hiking in the wilderness, you got snow on the ground or just whatever's covering your ground. Make sure to check your footing. Um, I'm not far from my car, so this is fine but I definitely soaked my boots. Now, luckily I'm wearing waterproof boots, which I would recommend anytime you're going on a hike like this, but uh, could have been bad. So the Rocky Mountains are what are known as fold mountains. They're estimated to be formed somewhere between 55 and 80 million years ago. 55 and 80 million. million years ago. 55 and 80 million. That's so many years. That's so old. So fold mountains occur uh, when uh, tectonic plates actually bump into each other and one may slide underneath the other or they bump into each other then sending the earth up. But what is a tectonic plate? Let's talk about that. A tectonic plate, also known as a lithospheric plate, is a massive slab of solid rock generally composed of both continental and oceanic lithosphere, which would be comprised of the crust and upper mantle of our planet. These plates, located just beneath the surface of the planet, they move, rub, and crash into each other, and that is how the planet is shaped. All right, so we're back. I got my plates, what do you say? We make a mountain. So if I'm correct, the marine is correct, what the plates do is they slam into each other and 
they create a mountain, right? So, uh, well, let's just give it a try. Here we go. Here we go. I'm trying to think of the best. We want a big mountain. All right, no, maybe. All right. didn't work. <sighs> Whew. That was frightening. Let's not do that again. Uh, so note to self, you guys at home, I was using ceramic plates and those break. Um, so please don't try that at home. But it was fun for the sake of this. Uh, but anyways, let's go into what we're really talking about, because we're not talking about dinner plates here. That's not the real plates we're talking about. But well, we're talking about the tectonic plates, all right? But what are those? Where do they come from? Um, Here we have a about? convergent plate boundary or subduction zone. The arrows represent how the plates move. The plate on the left rides below that on the right, pushing the earth upward. This process here is what is known as subduction. Big thanks to Charles Robacher of Urban Art Visions for designing this for me. So as mentioned before, the Rocky Mountains were believed to have formed somewhere between 55 and 80 million. That's right, you heard that right, million. Million years ago, 55 and 80 million. And it happened during an event called the Laramide Ora, Oro, Ora, Ora, I'm gonna put this word at the bottom of the screen. It's a tough one. Orogeny is maybe what it's called. That might be the correct pronunciation. Pronunciation might be may not. An orogeny is an event that leads to both structural deformation and compositional differentiation at the Earth's lithosphere or crust and uppermost mantle. Differentiation is a process of separating out different parts of a planetary body as a consequence of their natural behaviors, or it's what forms and creates the planet. But what is the lithosphere? Lithosphere, that one I can say, what the lithosphere is, is the outermost area of the Earth. So if you can imagine for a moment, our dinner plate turned tectonic plate turned earth, all right? The lithosphere is gonna be the outermost. So the crust is the actual surface, that's the top that we walk on. And then the mantle kind of takes up a lot of area kind of all the way down to the core. It's a large section called the mantle. And what we're talking about is just the uppermost mantle, right? Just the top of it. So just below the crust and the uppermost mantle or the lithosphere, that one I can say, are... So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So. So. But hey, enough of all this talk. We ain't come here to talk. We came here to go on an adventure, right? So why don't we go see the mountains firsthand? A couple days ago, I took a little hike, um, and uh, well, why don't you guys check it out? What's up guys, Brian coming back at you. So today we're gonna learn a little bit about mountains, which is gonna take us hopefully on some great hikes up here in the Rocky Mountains. Um, but first I have to go on the grandest and most frightening adventure ever. I have to enter into this Walmart over here to buy some sunblock because as discussed in previous videos, uh, the sun is quite intense two miles up in the air and I've been getting really badly sunburned recently. So I've got my face mask here, which is kind of slipping down. Um, I got some gloves and I've got a hand sanitizer. So uh, wish me luck, I'll be back. All right, success. I will say this though, if you're going just for sunscreen, maybe don't go to Walmart, but we got some. <laughs> so I can use my uh, my sunburn here. And we picked up a couple other toys, a little tripod may help for it. And then, uh, you know, this is pretty cheap. We'll see how it works. A little telephoto lens. Uh, yeah, we'll give it a try. All 
Alrighty guys, so we have made it to the top of Loveland Pass and we're gonna go ahead and see if we can zoom in on this. We're gonna hike up there and uh, and get a good look at the mountains because today, that's what we're talking about. But first, I gotta sub lock up. See you soon. <laughs> Started the journey to the top. Dirt behind me. You know what's interesting is you see behind me, it is uh it's all dirt. Then we turn around this way. Look at that. All snow. That's fun. So that mainly has to do with how the sun hits the different parts of the peaks and how much sun each peak gets during the course of the day. Wild, you know, when you're up here hiking in the mountains, you can be all dirt and grass, and it can take a big turn suddenly. halfway up and man the lack of oxygen is really getting to me as you can hear I'm really struggling to breathe I got all that left oh man Whew. it's gonna be tough oh just keep going I think it may be the thinning oxygen, but I can actually feel myself feeling a little lightheaded. And my legs feel really heavy. Now, it is a pretty steep hike, but I think it's definitely my lack of oxygen. It's still worth it. But when you're doing things like this, it's very important to take note of because it's dangerous. Never push yourself. And always know where your safe zones are. My safe zone is the gentleman back there walking up with his dog. So I figure I'd pass out. up here we made a friend what's up bud say hi don't look that way don't look this way okay this guy made it too and here's what's interesting you saw me huffing and puffing and basically dying with elevation change this dude is fine he's perfectly fine he's running around all over the place look at him look at him go look at this guy
All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in and going on an adventure with me. I hope you learned something. All the photos you saw were all photos and videos taken by myself, with the exception of a few that were taken by my good friend, Andrew Forrestel, uh, also known as Reptar Hikes. So if you're into hiking, he actually released a movie, um, I think it was last year, called The AT Experience, all about hiking the Appalachian Trail. It is awesome. I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, with your parents, of course. Parents, maybe watch it first. Uh, so anyways, I tried to count how many mountains there were or mountain ranges there were here in the world. And um, I got to 152. I'll be honest. I got tired of counting. So uh, we know there's more than 152. So hopefully uh, you can get out there and explore as many as you can. But as always, you know, uh, get outside, explore, see the world. You all have a great day.